Hey there, this is Atul from team K21 Academy and in this lesson we are going to look at cloud service models. Now there are three service models in cloud. One is infrastructure as a service we call IIS. Then second is platform as a service which we call PaaS or PaaS and then software as a service which is SaaS. So let's first understand what are the difference between these three. Now this is a traditional on-premise or customer's data center on which you have servers. When you look at in traditional on-premise deployment model, you have networking, storage, servers, virtualization, operating system, middleware, then you have runtime, data and application. Everything is the responsibility of client. You might have worked on this kind of environment. That's a traditional on-premise deployment model. Now comes the first service model, which is infrastructure as a service. And in infrastructure as a service, networking, storage, servers and virtualization layer is managed by your cloud vendor. So virtualization like which gives you an option to create virtual machines where you have a one big server or a physical server, you create multiple small virtual machines running on top of that server, that's virtualization. And most of these companies when you buy or say I want a machine, they are giving you a virtual machine. So the underlying virtualization is managed by the cloud vendor, but anything above that like operating system on that virtual machine like you have an option to select Windows or Linux that operating system is managed by you as a customer similarly middleware runtime data application everything else on you see in dark here that's managed by client so that's infrastructure as a service then you have a platform as a service in platform as a service networking or everything that you were doing in infrastructure as a service plus on top of that operating system middleware and runtime these are also managed by the cloud vendor and then you as a customer will only manage data and applications. So one question comes is what is this runtime here or what is this middleware? So first of all, middleware is anything where your application logic runs. So anything between database tier where your database runs and the web tier where your web servers run. Anything between them is a middleware or middle tier we call. And then any runtime on top of that and runtime could be for example, you have a Java development kit, JDK, or .NET runtime, or Python runtime, or you might have any runtime on which your application runs. So that runtime is all managed by the cloud vendor. You as a customer will manage only the data and application. Now the third is called as software as a service in which everything is managed by the cloud vendor. And you as a customer will only have account and you use that service you don't need to worry about what is the underlying operating system running what is the uh, whether application has a high availability disaster recovery who's going to manage that you as a customer will not do anything it's all done and managed by your cloud vendor so that's three models infrastructure as a service software as a service or platform as a service and then software as a service now a lot of guys come and say, oh, can you give us an example or between what is infrastructure as a service and platform as a service? And then we'll also look at what is the difference or what is an example of software as a service. So let's first look at difference between infrastructure as a service and platform as a service or an example of infrastructure as a service or platform as a service. So traditionally, when you're deploying, what you do, you create a virtual machine. On that, you have a server. On top of that server, you install operating system. And then on top of that operating system, you install application. It could be database, it could be a middleware, it could be a web server, it could be a runtime. And then on top of that, you deploy your application. So you manually doing all these tasks, which is creating a virtual machine, installing operating system, maybe during a virtual machine creation, then installing applications on top of that and managing them manually. That's an example of infrastructure as a service. That's IAS. Whereas platform as a service is where cloud vendor will take care of your operating system, your virtual machines, and the runtime. And in the runtime could be, as I said earlier, it could be a database service. It could be an app service. In this particular case, Microsoft Azure has an app service and that app service will have different type of apps. It, you can create a mobile app, you can create API apps, you can create a web apps, which is a web server, and you can create a function, which is a serverless. And we look some of these things when we look forward into the compute module. So this is where you are running a web app. That's an example of platform as a service. You creating machine manually or through console and then installing applications on top of that, say, infrastructure as a service. Now, another example of infrastructure service and platform as a service within database R tier or Microsoft Azure has three SQL database options where SQL stands for structured query language. 
and if you are part of our DP200, which is a Microsoft Azure data engineer, in that we go in detail about SQL database. We also touch base SQL briefly on Azure Solution Architect because as a part of solution, you have to do the database part. So we cover migration and database overview of SQL databases. So SQL structured query language, you have three offerings. One offering comes under infrastructure service and two other offering comes under platform as a service. Where in infrastructure service, you will create an operating system or a virtual machine and on top of that, you install manually the SQL server as you have been doing in on-premise. Or in platform as a service, you have two offerings, which means you don't need to manage or you don't create manually these machines. What you do is there's something called as managed server, which means Microsoft is going to manage the server on behalf of you. And that is Azure SQL managed service. You also have a Azure SQL database, and this is where you have a pre-provisioned or serverless compute, which means you don't even need to worry anything about the underlying operating system. Here, you are getting a SQL managed instance, which is Microsoft is going to manage it for you. So these two offerings are platform as a service. This type of installing SQL database is infrastructure as a service. So that's an example of IS and PaaS. Then you have software as a service, SaaS. An example of SaaS is your Office 365 where you have Word, Excel, PowerPoint, email, Outlook, Link, all those services that you do in the enterprise world, you buy a Microsoft Office 365 and all you're doing is you're downloading the license, not even downloading, you're buying the license. You don't need to worry about where exactly is hosted, managing servers, nothing. You're simply using the service. So that's software as a service. Another example of software service might be if you're using a paid version of Gmail. For our email accounts, we use Gmail behind the scene. So we only pay for the licenses or licensed users. I, we don't care about behind the scene, how the servers are, what the servers are, nothing. So that's an example of software as a service. So just to do a quick recap, there are three service models. One is infrastructure as a service, second is platform as a service, and third is software as a service where runtime environment or where your application is dependent on to run that application. For example, Java runtime environment, JRE or JDK or .NET or Python or PHP, or it could be your WebLogic server, it could be the database runtime, binaries and libraries, and then platform as a service and software as a service. This is an example of IS and PaaS. And this is another example of IS and PaaS where your same SQL database, but in three different flavors. And then you have a software as a service, which is Office 365. I hope this will have bring a little bit more clarity, but as we go further down and as you go through a couple of modules, when you actually create these Microsoft SQL databases or web apps, or manually creating these machines, you will start understanding these concepts. So with that, let's head on to the next lesson where we look at cloud deployment model, where we cover public, private, and hybrid cloud and what this hybrid cloud means. So I'll see you in next lesson. Well, this was our Azure cloud expert, Mr. Atul from Team K21 Academy. And this clip was taken from our free course for Azure beginners. Even if you're a beginner, this course will give you a holistic overview of Azure Cloud, Azure DevOps, Azure Data, Azure Security, and whatnot. And if you're already working on Azure Cloud, then this course will help you to revise your basic concepts. In order to subscribe to this course, all you have to do is just go to k21academy.com forward slash Azure and subscribe to this course. And within 50 minutes, you'll be getting an email. Under that, you'll be getting your login credentials and our WhatsApp group where you can ask your every doubt related to Azure Cloud. Thank you, and I will see you in the free course.